Intermediate Accounting, Chapter 10, Property, Plant, and Equipment, Accounting Model Basics, Appendix A and B. Chapter 10, Property, Plant, and Equipment, Accounting Model Basics. After studying Appendix 10A, you should be able to 8. Calculate the amount of borrowing costs to capitalize for qualifying assets. After studying Appendix 10B, you should be able to 9. Understand and apply the revaluation model using the proportionate method. Appendix 10A, Capitalization of Borrowing Costs. Borrowing costs are made up of interest and related costs that a company incurs related to the borrowing of funds. The cost of equity financing is specifically excluded. Four issues need to be considered in determining the amount of borrowing costs to be capitalized and how to report them. Which assets qualify? What is the capitalization period? What are the avoidable borrowing costs, the amount eligible to capitalize? What disclosures are needed? Appendix 10A, Capitalization of Borrowing Costs, quali Qualifying Assets 1 of 2. To qualify for inclusion in the cost of an asset, borrowing costs must be directly attributable to acquiring, constructing, or producing a qualifying asset. Meet both recognition criteria. Probability of future economic benefits and costs can be measured reliably. Qualifying assets must require substantial time to get ready for their intended use or sale. May include inventories, items of property, plant, or equipment, investment properties, or intangible assets. Appendix 10A, Capitalization of Borrowing Costs, Qualifying Assets 2 of 2. Borrowing costs for qualifying assets measured at fair value and inventories that are produced in large quantities on a repetitive basis may be capitalized. Assets that do not qualify. 1. Assets that are already in use or ready for their intended use when acquired. 2. Those produced over a short period of time. 3. Assets not undergoing activities necessary to get them ready for use. Appendix 10A, Capitalization of Borrowing Costs, Capitalization Period, 1 of 2. Capitalization Period, time over which interest must be capitalized, begins on the commencement date, which is when all three of the following conditions are met. 1. Expenditures for the asset have been made. 2. Activities that are necessary to get the asset ready for its intended use or sale are in progress, including necessary pre-construction administrative and technical work. 3. Borrowing costs are being incurred. Appendix 10A, Capitalization of Borrowing Costs, Capitalization Period 2 of 2. Capitalization period ends when substantially all the activities needed to prepare the asset for use or sale are complete. For example, if physical construction activities are finished but minor matters are outstanding, then capitalization stops when major activities are complete. If parts of a project are completed with others still in development, then capitalization stops on the parts that are substantially complete. If active development is on hold, then capitalization is suspended. Appendix 10A, Capitalization of Borrowing Costs, Avoidable Borrowing Costs 1 of 4. To qualify for capitalization, the costs must be directly attributable to a project. Must be avoidable borrowing costs, actual borrowing costs related to a specific qualifying asset. If costs are not directly attributable, borrowing costs can be calculated. Step 1. Determine the expenditures on the qualifying asset. Step 2. Determine the avoidable borrowing costs on the asset-specific debt. Step 3. Determine the avoidable borrowing costs on the, asset, on the non-asset-specific debt. Step 4. Determine the borrowing costs to capitalize. Appendix 10A, Capitalization of Borrowing Costs, Avoidable Borrowing Costs 2 of 4. Step 1. Determine the expenditures on the qualifying asset. 
Use the weighted average accumulated expenditures, which is defined as construction expenditures weighted by the amount of time. Example, assume a 17-month bridge construction project with current year payments to the contractor of $240,000 on March 1st, $480,000 on July 1st, and $360,000 on November 1st. Expenditures. March 1st, 240,000 times 10 divided by 12 months equals 200,000. July 1st, 480,000. 6 divided by 12 months equals 240,000. November 1st, 360,000 times 2 out of 12 months equals 60,000. So that is a total of 500,000. Appendix 10A, Capitalization of Borrowing Costs, Avoidable Borrowing Costs 3 of 4. Step 2. Determine the avoidable borrowing costs on the asset-specific debt. Zero asset-specific debt in this example. Borrowing costs reduced by any investment income on any temporary investment of the funds. Step 3. Determine the avoidable borrowing costs on the non-asset-specific debt. So the principal is 600,000, 12% two-year note equals 72,000 borrowing costs. A 10-year bond at 9%, the principal is 2 million, the borrowing costs are 180,000. You have a 7.5% 20-year bond, principal 5 million, borrowing costs equals 375,000. So if you take the total borrowing costs of 6 Two seven zero zero zero, and divide that by the weighted average principal outstanding of seven point six million. That equals eight point two five percent. So you have expenditures times rate. So five hundred thousand minus zero times eight point two five percent equals forty one two fifty. Appendix ten A. Capitalization of borrowing costs, avoidable borrowing costs 404. Step 4. Determine the borrowing costs to capitalize. Avoidable borrowing costs on asset specific debt plus avoidable borrowing costs on non asset specific debt. Step 2 plus step 3. 0 plus 41,250 equals 41,250, amount of borrowing costs to capitalize. Capitalized borrowing costs would be added to the acquisition cost and depreciated as part of that cost. Under both IFRS and ASPE, if a company chooses to capitalize interest, it can be expensed over the useful life of the asset and not over the term of the debt. Only two disclosures are required for borrowing costs, the amount capitalized and the capitalization rate. Appendix 10B Reevaluation the proportionate method one of three. Similarities to the asset adjustment method. Revaluation carried out frequently enough that the carrying amount is not materially different from fair value. Between revaluation dates, depreciation is taken on the revalued amount. Revaluation surplus account is reported as other comprehensive income. Over the life of the asset, there can be no net increase in net income from revaluing the asset. However, with a proportionate method, the asset's carrying amount and accumulated depreciation are adjusted so the net balance is the fair value of the asset at the revaluation date. Appendix 10B, Revaluation, the Proportionate Method Example 2 of 3. Building purchased in January 2017. Buildings account 100,000. Company uses revaluation model. Revalues every third year uses straight line depreciation. Life expectancy 25 years. No residual value. Fair value on December 31st, 2019 is 90,000. Calculate the amount to be adjusted under the proportionate method and provide the related journal entry for the building on December 31st, 2019. Depreciation expense, 100,000 divided by 25 years equals 4,000. 
accumulated depreciation December 31st, 2019. 4,000 times 3 years equals 12,000. Before revaluation, buildings accumulated depreciation and carrying amount, 88,000. Proportionate amount for revaluation, 90,000. B minus A for a total of 2,000. You would debit buildings, 2273. Credit accumulated depreciation buildings for 273 and credit revaluation surplus OCI for 2000. Appendix 10B, revaluation, the proportionate method example 3 of 3. Now we have proportionate amount of building 102273, proportionate amount of accumulated depreciation 12273. Company uses revaluation model, revalues every third year, uses straight line depreciation. Life expectancy, 25 years, no residual value. Fair value on December 31st, 2019 is 90,000, and fair value on December 31st, 2022 is 75,000. Calculate the amount of depreciation to be charged for years 2020 to 2022 and prepare the revaluation adjustment at December 31st, 2022. Depreciation expense is 102,273 minus 12,273 divided by 22 years equals 4091. Accumulated depreciation, December 31st, 2022, is 4091 times 3 plus 12,273 for a total of 24,546. Before revaluation, the carrying amount is 77,727. Proportionate amount after revaluation is 75,000. And B minus A is a total of negative 2727. So you would debit accumulated depreciation buildings for 861. You would debit revaluation surplus OCI for 2000. You would debit revaluation gain or loss for 727. And you would credit buildings for 3588.